Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Dustin, and today we are joined by Jared from Slash It. So, Jared, Hi, everybody. how are you doing? Hey, everybody. I'm doing good. How are you doing? I'm I'm great. It's a bit hot where I am right now, but that's, that's here. okay. <laughs> Same here. <laughs> um, but, you know, thank you for wanting to come on and partake mm -hmm. on one of my um, new series on the show, which is um, Screenbox Essential Picks. Yeah, of course. Um, thank you for having me. This is this is a fun. I love talking horror movies. It's just a fun thing for me to do. Yeah, me too. Mm -hmm. I, I love it. And um, it's actually it's fun to do these because my co-host I usually have on. He's from the UK, and mm -hmm. um, he's doing a bunch of conventions and stuff right now. So I had to do something that would be fun to have other people come on and do mm -hmm. while also maintaining the actual show. So I decided to you know do a little bit more love for Screenbox because they've been very very good to us and mm -hmm. and the amount of movies they put out every month yeah it can be a bit daunting mm -hmm. um so i always like to let everybody know that i'm making this uh it's an essential playlist you know of movies that you should go and watch out if you are new to Screenbox or if you're thinking about getting screen boxing like wow there's a lot of movies on here I don't know where mm -hmm. to start um <laughs> so i said let's make this essential picks or a central list. And I'm going to start, you know, uh, putting them all on letterbox too. So that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm going to do that. Um, because I have the app, but I haven't used it in a long time. So I'm like, you know, yeah. this is a good opportunity. It's a great opportunity. Yeah. Yeah. Very, really very cool good one. opportunity. <laughs> um, so we're doing episode six and before we get into the movies that we picked, um, Jared, if you want to go on and let, you know, all the listeners and watchers, uh, know where you are, where to find you and what you do. Oh, yeah. Um, so my YouTube channel name is Slash It. I've been doing it kind of off and on for like two-ish years. Um, oh, wow. I used to do just kind of discussions, but um, more recently, I'm trying to do more deeper dives in podcast form. So like I've just written a podcast episode just the last like week about the zombie genre. And awesome. from, you know, I Walked with the Zombie, we're going to end it at uh, Night of the Living Dead. Okay. And then... Um, we'll go from there. So it's kind of, I like to kind of do deep dive research, heavy um, genre and specific movies. We'll get there. Um, you can follow me on Twitter. It's at slash at horror. Um, it's fun. I just tweet random things about movies I've seen. Um, it's not nothing too special, but you can go hang out with me there and talk oh, yeah. horror movies. <laughs> the love of the game, man. I understand mm -hmm. that all too well. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll put all your um, links and everything in the description for anybody who wants to go check you out. And I highly recommend it, especially if like deep dives. I watched a couple of your videos and I, I love your style and what you're doing. And um, I want you to you know, continue to grow. Um, horror, the last, I want to say like three to four years has been so essential to a lot of people, um, you know, especially because of the pandemic and everything. And now that we have this new, well, I want to say new, but they've been around for a while, which is Streambox, mm -hmm. you know, rebranding themselves. And um, it's awesome to have them have so much to s showcase and mm -hmm. for everybody to go and watch. So I think we picked some pretty outrageous films. <laughs> um, <laughs> yes, we did. Um, so I'll let uh, you talk about the film that you picked first, um, which okay. is Pieces. Uh, pieces. Yeah, I picked 1982's uh, Pieces. It's a... Um, Puerto Rican giallo film. Um, it is, so I'm going to try to explain it without spoiling too much. Yeah. The best way I can put this movie is if this is the kind of movie that you would want to be shopping at a video store and pick it up off the shelf, knowing nothing about it. Like oh, don't read yeah. anything about it. Just pick it up because there's so many WTF moments <laughs> from beginning to end that if you know too much, it's going to ruin it just a little bit, not too much. Like it's not going to ruin everything, but just pieces. It's, it's a fantastic film. I love it. It is such a, it's a perfect kind of introduction into like late seventies, early eighties, like giallo horror films, because it's not, yeah. it, you can, how do I word that? Like you can respect what it's trying to do, but you also understand it's so WTF that like yeah, it's it's definitely pretty bonkers. Um, uh -huh. Especially you know towards like the the later half of the film when things start unraveling. Mm -hmm. um, but it's a <laughs> great film, and um, pieces is one I've I saw I want to say maybe five years ago. Um, so I I'm pretty new to the game with with this one, and it's 
been getting a lot of love over the past two years um because it was on shutter now it's on Screenbox, and um people have been discovering it and it's crazy <laughs> it's very it's, crazy it is an insane movie it's full of twists and i don't even know if they knew where they were going when they started it feels like they didn't yeah, yeah i can agree on that um it's got a lot of really cool kills in it um yeah the killer is kind of cool too and there's a lot of like um red herrings that are in here like oh you think it's this guy oh it's not so it's kind of like a who's doing it yeah uh-huh. in a jalo in a slasher it's... so they've morphed so many yes. things together uh-huh and the whole ending scene that I'm going to try not to spoil too yeah, much, yeah. but that whole just like 15 minute span at the end of the movie is just like, it's constantly hitting you with scream era twists just over and over and over again. It's so fun. Yeah, I agree. Um, I have the Rotten Tomatoes up here too. Um, have you looked at the scores for it yet? I actually haven't. All right. Well, um, I'll let you uh, take a, take a guess. So for the tomato meter, what do you think uh, mm. the percentage is? It's got 14 reviews. Just <laughs> Okay. Um, so that's a tough one. Because it depends on who's reviewing it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, 45. Wow. 43. So you're very Oh, close. shoot. <laughs> <laughs> actually did not look that up that was very very close oh yeah i was, I was and, deciding uh, between 60 and 40 somewhere in that yeah, range yeah 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 40 i think mm-hmm. for this type of film is is pretty typical mm-hmm. um i mean there's barely any critics reviewing it and i think because they don't want to touch the film but that's fine yeah but what do you think about the audience score what do you think they rated it I mean, this has got 2500 plus reviews uh 60 51. 51. Mm. So you're, you're pretty mm. close in the ball game over there. Um, let's see if we have any info on budget, because sometimes Rotten Tomatoes likes to do that. They don't. All right. I do have when it was released in theaters, though. Um, so it was released in theaters September 23rd, 1983. And then it went to streaming August 2nd, 2005. So that had mm. to have been like Netflix or something yeah. way uh-huh. way early in the day um it's a very very bonkers film uh it's one that i really enjoy um and whenever one of my friends asks me hey does, i want to watch a horror movie what should i watch i'm like well if you're in the mood for a slasher that's got a lot of other things mixed in and you want a wide range <laughs> of different genres in the horror genre pieces is definitely one it, mm-hmm. to watch it's pieces is definitely a, it's one of the movies that you it's one of the perfect introduction movies just yeah. to the whole world of everything even just even just like the scraping the top you know texas chains of massacre movies yeah. it's one of those perfect movies because you can explore what you liked and didn't like about that movie yeah for sure and um it's got a lot of good shots in it and um, there's not really anything bad I can say about this. I think I may have actually reviewed this on the show, but it was like super early on. So I don't remember what I gave it as a score, but I think I did it pretty highly because um, of how entertaining this film is. And mm-hmm. it's one that you can rewatch a lot. Sometimes you you watch like a slasher like this and you're like, oh, I'm kind of one and done. But mm-hmm. this is one you can definitely put on multiple times and yeah, and enjoy it every it's, single time. Yeah. Uh-huh. It reminds me a bit of um, Edge of the Axe, just a yeah, little bit. Yeah, oh just my with God, the, yes. Just yes. with the, like, the way it presents itself is so, like, we're here. Yeah. We're going. We're, we're going to do this. And so it reminds me a lot of just the way that that movie flows and yeah. takes itself. It's so funny they say that, too, because it's not a movie I hear a lot of people talk about, but I think that was the very first movie I ever reviewed on the show. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's still one of our, like highest watched and listened to episodes which is crazy um the movie's crazy um so it's yeah that's pretty much pieces so for anybody who's looking for that type of movie that we're describing go watch it on on screenbox right now it's it's great um and i kind of picked one that's sort of in the same ball game but it's more exploitation and it's way more in your face with the the things that are happening and that is house on the edge of the park 
this is one um, I had no idea existed until um, it got added, I think, late last month to Screenbox. And I was like, you know what? I'm in the mood for some exploitation crazy films because mm-hmm. they can go pretty wild. And this one goes pretty wild. <laughs> um, you know, it's about these two friends that, you know, go to a party and um, things start happening. And then there's a twist at the end, which you can kind of see coming, honestly, mm-hmm. because of how the people are acting in this house. You think there's definitely something going on and you're trying to figure it out and it feels a little um weird but i like it and it's very in your face there's a lot of um nudity there's a lot of you know like rape that's going on in here Mm -hmm. and stuff like that but it's all for the plot because of what the group is doing get to the end it makes a lot of sense Mm sense but um it's definitely it's a hard one to watch if you are um, sensitive to stuff like this, but it's a it's a really good film. <laughs> so is it closer to like um, what is it, Last House on the Left than like Hits yeah, Chainsaw yeah, Massacre? that's a good way to put okay. it. Yeah, okay, that's yeah. definitely one that I would I would definitely say you know, that's the close trigger to. warnings throw up a little bit. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a um Italian um exploitation film, so it is okay. English dubbed, but it's okay. very good. Um, it's crazy. Um, let me go to Rotten Tomatoes. I'll just tell you what the score is. Um, it's actually got the same percentage as um, pieces for the critic mm. score, and there's only seven reviews, 43%. And then the audience score, which is 2,500 plus reviews, and that's 39%. I can totally understand why. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and there's actually no theatrical release on here, so I wonder... Huh. It, if that's because maybe it went straight to video. I know at, the, yeah. at this point in time, a lot of these films were kind of just released straight to video because of how insane they were, unless you were going yeah. to, um, you know, like a really small cinema that was doing movies like this at the time. But we do have a streaming release, and that was March 1st, 2011. No idea mm. what it would have been released on. Maybe mm. Netflix? Maybe, um, but I feel like with this type of movie, it would be kind of hard to probably put it on a service like that. I don't know if, because I I know that um, I think it was some company I can't remember if it was AMC had like Chiller or something. Was oh, it, it maybe was, it like, was a, a Chiller cable, network, and then they like yeah. made it a streaming website later. I don't actually know. I'm just throwing out an idea and yeah. kind of the timeline of everything. When was that movie um, released? Um, that like, it, um, it was released 1980. Okay, okay. Yeah, so it's about the same time frame as like where mm. Pieces is and all the other exploit films that were going out. Um, so if you are an exploitation movie hound, like I am at some times, this is one you definitely want to go and watch. It's got a lot of crazy things that happen in it. It's um an hour and a half, so it's right at that 90 minute mark, same it's... as Pieces. Both at that ninety minute mark, so um, <laughs> yeah, it's it's, it's perfect. It's and perfect. It's a film that I think some people might have to stop and come back to. Um, mm-hmm. You know, if you need that kind of break. Yeah. But um, I enjoyed it. I loved the ending. I'm not going to spoil anything because this is just our, you know, quick thoughts on these films and as to mm-hmm. why they're essential. So why I think this is essential is because exploitation. I think over the last couple of years hasn't been as popular or prominent. Um, And this is one that I think would spark some people's curiosity in the exploitation realm uh, in horror films Mm -hmm. and for how crazy it is and the cinematography. And it's actually pretty beautiful for how crazy and graphic this film really is. Um, Mm -hmm. So that's why I would say this one is essential to me. Jared, why is pieces essential to you? Pieces, I, it's because it's kind of one of the first times where I kind of just like picked, I, it was the first time I picked a horror movie based purely on like the cover art oh, okay. because the art for pieces is just amazing. Yeah. And then it was the first time I started to fall in love with like the late seventies, just that genre of filmmaking that was going on then. 
Yeah. And it just, it has a certain like love that I have for it just because of just that whole feeling I was in. It was like the summer of like my, like uh, I was just graduated. And okay. so it's just like that full, like full t- moment in time period yeah. for this movie to come across my life. <laughs> yeah. It's definitely one to watch thing if you want something that's like kind of all around. Or if you want to be uh, a quick introduction to that type of film, because there's a lot more later on in the 80s that kind of, I'm not going to say mimic, but they do kind of have the same vibe as this. And I love the, mm-hmm. the who done it, who's doing it. Yeah. You know, about it, because there wasn't a lot of films like that back mm-hmm. then. Now we have a lot. I mean, we have, what, Six Screams now, and it's been some other films that are kind of doing mm-hmm. like, oh, who who did it? Um, so it's definitely one to um, go and check out and subscribe mm-hmm. to on Screenbox for sure. Mm-hmm. So um, this was really fun, Jared. Um, I know these are really, 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 really fast. And um, I would love to have you back on to do maybe a yeah. full deep dive on something. Um, yeah, of course. Make sure you guys are going to uh, subscribe to um, Slash It. Go watch Jared's work. And um, go and subscribe to Screenbox. They are still, yeah. I believe, the cheapest streaming service out there for mm-hmm. horror and mm-hmm. they have a lot and it has dropped a bunch this month and they're going to keep dropping more so uh thank you guys for coming and listening to this one hopefully we piqued interests in both of these films um if you need more recommendations outside of the show let me know or reach out to jared i'm sure he's got a couple that you can swing away as well <laughs> but um thank you guys so much for being here jared Thank yeah. you for being part of this. Yeah, game. of course. Thank you for having me. This has been really fun. Yeah, and we'll we'll do a longer episode next time, I promise. Yeah, we'll sure, do a full sure. deep dive on something. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody. We'll catch you on the next one.